Look at what they value and look at their budget and what they're proposing. Romney wants to let the, he said in the first hundred days, he's going to let the big banks once again write their own rules. Unchain Wall Street. They're going to put you all back in chains. That is so unbelievably offensive. Um, let me introduce you to three guests. Um, Kira Ann Davis, she's a video blogger and featured contributor at Independent Journal Review. Star Parker is the founder and president of the Center for Urban Renewal and Education and syndicated columns. Uh, Joseph Phillips, he's an actor and conservative commentator. Welcome, all three of you. To Thank, the you. Program. Thank you. Good to be here. Um, <clears throat> that is really offensive. <laughs> really well, offensive. Just it's offensive. What he said is offensive. The way he said it is also offensive. Yeah. And I, I always get a big laugh at how uh, these uh, politicians on the left launch into that kind of folksy uh, black dialect whenever <laughs> they uh, want to appear like they're, I ain't no they're in with us. Todd. Oh my yeah. God. Uh, Hillary. Oh and my Obama God. does that the same thing, old. you know, with he mm -hmm. drops the end of his words at the end. That I find offensive. It is offensive, but I think the audience caught on there too. Notice they didn't know how to respond mm -hmm. because blacks know when they're being offended and when they're being mocked. And although they might think they have no alternative but to accept what Democrats throw out, we're hoping that on the gun issue they think otherwise. Well, I, I really don't understand because, um, uh, I, I mean, everything, first of all, we were just talking before we went on the air mm -hmm. that. Everybody I supposedly, supposedly uh, supposed to hate, mm -hmm. women, mm -hmm. uh, Jews, blacks, everybody, this is what this is all about. Right. That's what this is all about, is keeping people free, no matter who they are, keeping people free. And they're the ones right. that are really, truly enslaving and putting in danger all of these people. That's what I was kind of saying in, the, in that video, and I sort of reference that Biden comment in, in my viral video about the Second Amendment. And I say, you know, as long as I've been a Republican, which hasn't been that long, a conservative, which hasn't been that long, um, every time a conservative or Republican has been up for a, election, it's from the left, it's been, this person is going to put you all back in change. This person is going to roll back civil rights 40 years. You know, you know, all that, those scary mm -hmm. things. And my thing is, look, if you really honestly believe that can happen, why would you support a gun ban? You should want guns because at some point you're going to have you can get. <laughs> at some point you're going to have a Republican president. Yeah. So you better make sure that nothing like that can happen. Okay. going to happen. So, so let me ask you this because mm -hmm. you've been uh, you've been on the history of mm -hmm. of gun control for a while. Most people, I mean, we sit around today. Uh, mm -hmm. The guy who owns this is a friend of mine. Do you, does anybody know what this is? No. This no. is a really important, this is a more important symbol than the Liberty Bell was for um, uh, emancipation. Mm -hmm. This, the guy who owns this, I was in his house and he has a history like you wouldn't believe. And I was in his house and I, and I, it stopped me dead in my tracks and I said, oh my gosh, how, where's that come from? Mm -hmm. And he yeah. said, what? And I said, am I not a man? And he, mm -hmm. he didn't even know what it was. Mm -hmm. This was originally done by Wedgwood, the guy who makes the famous Wedgwood plates. Mm -hmm. This was the symbol, um, that, and he put it on plates originally. Mm -hmm. And this went to all of the people who were against slavery. Mm -hmm. And they used the symbol, and it said above it on the plate, am I not a man? Am I not your brother? Mm -hmm. This is an important piece of history. Most people don't even know it. There it is, right, right there. Am right. I not a man? Am I not your brother? Mm -hmm. But people don't even know the recent history. Right. Well, they don't know a couple of histories on this one, and that's the reason that I started challenging when I heard that the um, Democrats in the Senate were going to take up gun control. I started challenging this premise that this is a good idea to, to disarm the society. We don't understand black history when it comes to the relationship to the Republican Party, for one, because mm -hmm. blacks were traditionally Republican. It was the party that freed us. The Democrats have never changed their strategy. They've always wanted people unarmed, uneducated, and dependent on whoever that master is, whether it was the master at that time in slavery or whether it's the master today that keeps them in, chain, uh, in chains to the welfare state. But also, they don't know their history when it comes to gun and gun protection. All blacks were not slaves. This is something that a lot of African Americans themselves do not know. They were not enslaved. 
explain. Democrats have convinced them that they've always been servants and that they need to just be quiet on this particular issue. No, it was over a matter of time that they disarmed the black community, it be, and mostly because the freed slave was a threat to uh, those that were keeping others in chains for a couple of reasons, but also as blacks became free, they started seeing more black code and more opportunities to disarm them so that they can keep them in, under control. You know, I'm, I'm glad that Star brought this up, you know, as an actor working in Hollywood and, and as a consumer of entertainment. I have grown so tired mm -hmm. of seeing film after film after film mm -hmm. portraying black characters right. is cowering in the corner mm -hmm. while the Ku Klux Klan mm -hmm. or Knight Riders are outside threatening them, waiting for someone to come save them. That's right. The truth is that black people often fought back Absolutely. and they fought back with guns. That's right. And being the cowards that they were, you know, wearing hoods so you can't tell who they are, mm -hmm. cowards, mm -hmm. they thought that uh, wisdom being the better part of val valor, better not to face bullets, let's go to uh, the, and, and use the political system right. to right. deny those people the right, right. to yeah. own oh. guns. That's right. That's when you started to see all of this anti-gun legislation, mm -hmm. gun control legislation, mm -hmm. was to keep guns out of the hands of Mm -hmm. Free blacks, newly freed you blacks. Can't deny yeah. that, that you can't deny that con connection. And as a matter of fact, in the 1800s when the, the KKK started, and we hear you were just educating on this earlier, but we know that that was a, a, a wing of the Democrat Party, yeah. the enforcement wing. And what would happen is in the South, local sheriffs would go in to, they would break, they would bust into black homes, especially the farmers, you know, a lot of rural families, and they would confiscate their weapons under these laws that were, were uh, being passed or even just being discussed. They didn't necessarily have to be passed. Mm -hmm. And they would say, well, we're taking these for safety reasons. And then three or four safety? weeks later, right. a band of, you know, 500 or so KKK will come through, mm -hmm. murder everyone, burn the house down, mm -hmm. because the weapons had already been Cleared. Mm -hmm. This is not an issue of, of um, what's safe for school children, or what the Second Amendment meant when it talked about guns, it, did, it meant muskets. It's not an issue of that. It's an issue, as a black Americans, it's an issue of our freedom. And we, we should be concerned about this. This should not be a partisan issue. It's not just about the black, because when you think about what they're doing now, they just passed into law yesterday, well, out of the Senate hearing, um, background check, and now they're saying, well, we should do something about the mental cases, and then we should do something about those that have criminal background. Selectivism tr was tried as well, because getting to their point, even prior to the uh, freed slave, there were free blacks in this country, and when we started seeing systematic laws to select just a few that were not be able to be armed, what's really interesting in black history is that there was a, a opportunity, especially in northern states, to where black freed slaves did not have a right to bear arms, but southern slaves did because their job was to protect their master's property. Over time we started seeing those rules get harder and more harsh. So for anyone in the majority community that thinks that, well, it might be a good idea to just let's investigate a little bit deeper into people's lives to see if they should qualify for a gun. When do we stop these qualifications? If you look back at the European uh, law, those qualifications were class and religion. If you look at our law right now, talk about mental state. If you've had an abortion, did you know that you're 81% more likely to have a, uh, a problem uh, with mental challenges later on in life? Are we going to start asking, have you had abortion on these background checks? So let me, so hang on. I so mean, come on. on. There's a lot I of problems go here. Right, I want to go right there. We have to take a break. Why don't we go right there? Because the background checks... They're gonna. They are going to. What are they, ask? they are going to hurt the African American community. Oh, absolutely. And using the argument of the left, you can prove that it'll hurt the African American yeah, community sure. uh, uh, more. And I'd love to hear your reaction. And how do you get this message out into um, the black community and educate? quickly enough yeah, cool. to be able to One stop this well, juggernaut. It's, it's, hang, hang on, hang on, take a break. We'll be right back. The, if I take the um, leftist mottos, always, that the black man is wrongly accused of crimes and the, popular, the whole prison, what do they call it, the prison... Um, industrial complex. Industrial complex mm -hmm. was built just to put the black man behind bars. 
um, that um, um, uh, that they are in jail at a higher rate, and we know that to be true. Mm -hmm. um, but that is an injustice. Let's remember felons that the, the leftists always will tell us. Well, the, the, the drugs coming over the border is just to um, you know CIA was selling drugs in the inner cities just to get the black man in trouble and get him hooked on drugs, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. You mentioned abortions, higher for, um, uh, for the African-American, mm -hmm. and also a, a much greater rate of mental problems afterwards due to it, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. mental instability. This is what study is showing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have all of those things, mm -hmm. and yet mental instability, felony, Problems with uh, with um, any kind of uh, drugs; those will all get you Infection. disqualified. Right. At the same time, that doesn't seem to be a problem with anybody on the left. I'm told that if you ask for ID to vote, that that is racist. Right. But for the federal government to ask these questions right. is not somehow sane and fine. But Glenn, it was, the, the federal government has also said that you can't ask those questions. When you hire someone in, in a hiring Have you been in jail, you, right? Exactly. So you would think if it's racist, mm -hmm. and, and, and you know, if, you, if your claim is that it's racist and that people won't get hired because they won't pass the test, then it would make sense that you would make the same argument about so, guns. Yeah. So you could make that point that this was designed to keep the African American not owning a gun. And, and not just not owning a gun government dependent. Mm -hmm. The Democrats have not changed their strategy mm -hmm. all through slavery. Uneducated, unarmed, and dependent. And what we see today is the government control in the schools, in particular in these communities, have convinced them that they should not even consider exercising their Second Amendment right. Then they convince them that if we do background checks, this is a good thing for you to keep you federally dependent. Black polls show they do not trust local police, but they trust the federal government. But yet, Less than 16% of African Americans own a weapon, have taken up the Second Amendment right to own and bear arms. But the federal what? government is not the one coming to your door if you're having somebody kicking well, your door. The people in Katrina thought they were, didn't they? They yeah, think they, they have been, yeah. they've been convinced they waited, that they did, and, and they still yeah. are waiting for government to do yeah. something. And what we have and what blacks have been convinced to do is hire officials. Um, you know, they, they hire these officials, they vote for these politicians whose exclusive job is to keep them uneducated, to keep them unarmed, and to keep them government dependent. You so have what, these guys have the role of the overseer to go into these black communities you know, and a, convince them that they should that's just a great keep point. waiting 80, for 80%, They just report 80 percent of the uh, graduates in New York City public schools oh, uh, graduate well, functionally yeah. illiterate. That's right. And, and yet what they're talking about, in addition to Herr Bloomberg's uh, soda bans and, and, and concern about the loudness of earphones, mm -hmm. is stricter gun control, gun control. laws yeah. in While in they're New living York. in impoverished and, t and communities that are overtaken by criminals, right. and yet you don't hear one congressional black caucus <laughs> member say, how do you get the hand, guns out of the hand of the ill-intended? How come if we can't control the inner cities right now and the crime rates that they have, why does that make it a good idea then for us to take the, the only little bit of weapons that are already left in those communities and not just that, extend it out into the greater society? If anyone in America uh, d thinks that this is just hyper conspiracy theory, look at what has happened to blacks in yeah. this country because that's where we're going to go if they allow for these yes. background checks and these controls over assault weapons and all the rest of this stuff that they're passing out of the Senate. If they convince these especially these blue senators in red states, that they should vote for this thing because President Obama thinks that they should, the rest of the country is going to start losing their constitutional right because on that test you can be guaranteed that in order to find out do you have mental illness that they're going to have to go into your medical records. On that test, if they, in order for them to keep the, hand, the, the guns Jim out of Crow. I mean, come on, what was, the, what no, was this really, crime yeah. up there in, in, in Sandy Hook? I mean, I feel sorry. I five year, my goodness, my grandchild is seven years old. We all could connect to not wanting yeah. that to happen in our schools. But the answer is not to disarm because what was his crime. He went in, he stole the guns he from stole. his mom. So let's ask ourselves on the background check, are we going to start asking about divorce and drinking? Because mm -hmm. that's all she did. She hey, was well, drinking uh, and she was divorced. She owned her guns. He came and stole it back and in shot down kids. How do you, how, how do we get this out to um, enough people fast enough to um, make this matter? 
I, th I think that the, the, the story is important. Mm -hmm. I think that that's one thing that conservatives have really failed at in the past is, tell is telling a story. And it, we need to get better at telling stories. That's one why Joe Biden can go say the most ridiculous things and people still applaud him. But he, he's a good storyteller. And I think mm. one of the stories that we need to be bringing back to our communities, our family, our friends, and what we do in our social media lives is, is reminding black folks, look, we are inherently distrustful of government. We always have been. We should be. We have good reason to be. We're distrustful of police. We've had good reason to be in our history. So why would you invite more government into your life? I use the same argument with Obamacare. Why would you invite more government into your life? We don't want right. this. This has been dangerous mm -hmm. to us in the past, and there's no reason to believe that it wouldn't bad. be dangerous again. The schools are bad, but we should have mandatory preschool. Right. Right. So that can get started <laughs> earlier. But it, but it but, works but no for some reason. No. Well, I, not, not necessarily. Go ahead. Well, we'll what I was going to say is that the, the problem is that we have to realize is that, that we are also fighting what I believe is a social agenda that crosses color lines. Uh, you know, Eric Holder talked about uh, making guns like cigarettes mm -hmm. where, where you're going to put them off in the corner. And this is similar to what happened to my son at El Camino Real, is that here is this idea that to own guns, to want to own a gun, to like guns, makes you bad, crazy, mm -hmm. suspect. We had better do a background check on you because there's right. got to be something wrong with you if you want a gun. Right. Whereas to eschew guns makes you a good person, mm. righteous, uh, <laughs> noble. Mm -hmm. And that is some heavy stuff to fight. Well, I think it's more than just, yeah. uh, and, and let me just mm -hmm. wrap this up. It's more than just telling a story. It's standing up. That's it's right. it's saying enough is That's enough, right. Right. Uh, and and it's loud action in the mm -hmm. same type of intense protest that was brought against other injustice mm -hmm. has to happen here. It well, can't just be. That's what we're be. doing. That's, well, good, that's yeah. why Cure came out with the ad. And I've got a lot of pushback on it. It's very that. provocative. It is, it, it's reminding it's us so of a time in history that people don't want to talk about. But the KKK, six million people. People thought it was a whole country. It was 5% of the country. A hundred million people sat quietly while they wreaked havoc over one little small part of our society. Three thousand lynchings in a very short well, period of time. Is. We are never going to let this happen again. So we're cure is pushing in. We are pushing in. We're going to make sure that every black understands their history in two places. Number one, guns. You've got to have this Second Amendment right. You've got to protect it, and then you've got to participate in it. But number two, you need to know the history of these parties, because I'm telling you, they are putting in control people who have used the same agenda throughout their history, uneducated, Always. unarmed, and, and dependent. And I'm going to say, just and that's the this Democrats. last little bit, is we are really fighting what's happening in the school system. Oh, absolutely. Because the people who are teaching history in school oh. are some of the very same people who are telling us that guns are bad, mm -hmm. that guns in the black community is racist. Right. School and choice. so we've I really got choice. to stand One of the best things could have happened is the social media because now we can get our message to the black community because what used to happen is that guard, those overseers would sit there and make sure that there were no channels into these communities. You have to go through the black church, the left black church, or you have to go through these politicians. Not anymore. The internet takes us in and we can develop our own ads and our own messaging and we're doing it.